Hi, I'm Janet. After years of trying to figure out the film industry, making some gains, only to see them dwindling away, I finally got my shit together and I made $85,000 my first year in the film industry in Los Angeles. Creating a career in film does not need to be a struggle. You can start in your city. I want to teach you my process and teach you how to do it. You'll see that you really can live that extraordinary film lifestyle that only the film industry can provide. Let's go. So let's go to Sarah. Sarah Hamilton from Scotland, Hello. ladies and gentlemen. Tell us, tell us right now, because I know you'll have 10 minutes. I know what it's like to be on set too and your mind is going a million places. Um, tell us about your life before Friends and Film and your life now. Okay, uh, so my life before Friends and Film, I worked in hospitality. Um, I hated my job. <laughs> um, it was n not what I wanted to do. I mean, I don't think you get many people that want to work in hospitality for the rest of their lives. And before Friends and Film, I knew that I wanted to get into the film industry, but I just didn't know how. Um, I didn't know how to find out what was going on around me. Uh, the one film site I could find for Scotland had next to no information on it looked like it hadn't been updated in years so I had no idea where to start so that's why I started with friends and film because I realized this will help me start at least it will help me know what I need to do to get my foot in the door which is all it basically is I as long as you're a good person and a good worker, you will continue to work as soon as you get your foot in the door. And that's basically what happened with me. Um, so before Friends and Film, hospitality, not enjoying it, started Friends and Film, started out with the modules, just building up my work, um, finding all the different sites that would help me. So there's a lot of different crew sites in Scotland where you can like list yourself um, and people can hire you from there. And um, yeah, so I started doing that. I started doing all like the little indie short films, just building up my experience, which was surprisingly easier than I thought it would be once I did the modules and I knew what I was writing in those emails. I knew what I needed to put on my CV. It was amazing how many people were like, oh yeah, we'd love to bring you on. We'd love you to come help us out. And then, yeah, just having that good work ethic, even with those people, because even though it's unpaid and um, it's maybe never going to get seen, it's still experience. Um, and it's very different to a big film set, but you're still learning things that will help you on those big film sets and when you start getting those paid jobs I, I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for friends in film I might still be trying to figure it out I might have not gotten to where I am now if it wasn't because of friends in film so yeah it's been very helpful for me <laughs> right now you're working on now I am working on the second season of a prison drama for Channel 4, which is one of our main broadcasters in, uh, in Glasgow, in the UK. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And you're in, the you're in the production office right now, right? Yes, I mean, right now I am outside of the office. This is my office here in this big building. And then we've got like our various little easy ups that house the different things in them. <laughs> um, then you go around this way. So that's how I get into my office. Let's see over here, there's some more cabins. Um, these ones are kind of housing our COVID gear. Um, and then the top one is a producer cabin. So that's where people can just kind of go and have meetings and uh, have chats and stuff because our production office is very open plan. Um, so we have these little separate cabins that people can go to to chat about stuff. Yeah. What do you think about working in the film industry? Uh, I, I love it. Um, before I started Friends in Film, I was an actor, but uh, I now live with chronic pain that makes it hard for me to be an actor. Um, so that was kind of why I knew I wanted to be in film, but I just needed to find something else to do. So I was lucky that I got to have some experience on Batgirl, which came here at the beginning of the year. Um, it's unfortunately not going to get released now, which is a shame, but I did get to be on set for a lot of that filming, which was really cool just to 
be involved with it all and kind of see how it works. And that was a very big Hollywood production. So it was um, maybe a bit more like it would be in America. Um, but yeah, it was just really cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us some of your major credits since you started Friends and Film and got into the film industry? Yeah, so the very first job I worked on was actually COP26 uh, last November when it came up to Glasgow. So uh, that wasn't so much a film and TV thing, but I was still getting a little bit of experience with um, like the camera guy I was working with and the producer was really helpful. Then I worked on Batgirl. Um, I did a few different jobs on that across about three months. Then I went on to a TV show as a production runner. Um, and while I was on that TV show, it was it was an ITV show that was based on a book called Six Four. And it had Kevin McKidd as the lead actor, who so you might know from Grey's Anatomy. Um, he's a lovely guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was I worked on that job. And then as I was on that job, I got promoted from runner to assistant. So from that point on, I was kind of chained to my desk and became a member of the production team. And then after that job, I started this job that I'm currently on as the production secretary. Awesome. What would you say was a concern that you had personally before you started living this life about your ability to work in film? What was the concern? Um, I think my concern, one of, I mean, one of my concerns was chronic pain and I have had to switch what I want to do within film. Like I thought I wanted to be an AD, but uh, when I worked as a floor runner, I noticed there was quite a number of days I'd have to go home early just because of my chronic pain. Um, so that's how I kind of ended up moving into production, which has worked out well for me so far. Um, I will still have pain flare up every now and again. But I think because I'm in an office, it's, it's easier to handle because if that does happen, I can go off somewhere myself or I can go home and work from home. Um, and then I think other than my chronic pain, it was just the worry that I have no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> um, especially with production, because a lot of it is paperwork and you're doing the contracts for cast and you're uh, sorting out invoices for people. You're arranging flats and travel for the cast and things like that. So I think just not knowing that stuff and feeling like I wasn't smart enough uh, to do those things. But at least the team I've been with, at least just now, have been incredible and really supportive. And they understand that I probably am going to know those things and I need to learn them. So it's scary. It's definitely scary when you first start, but you will learn that everyone, for the most part, is really helpful and wants to help you progress. And you probably found that there are many people in this business that have all sorts of problems and they work in the film industry it's like you're going to have, people are going to go through everything. This is life. So film industry is not necessarily like this place that you could only work if you're super healthy and everything is working perfectly for you. Tons of people work in the business with chronic pain, with cancer problems, with all sorts of issues. Yeah, there's, I've, met, um, I've met an AD actually who lives with chronic pain and his is in his leg and it was a result of an accident at work unfortunately it happened when he was on set but he lives with chronic pain and when I was speaking to him he told me that because his in, it, his is in his leg he can sit down if he needs to so he's still able to keep doing his job um, and I think that's that's like most people that are living with something that might slow them down um, in this industry is they're always trying to find maze, ways to make it work so for the AD example, um, he would just sit down and continue to be an AD, but he was sat down instead. And um, for me, it's if I get a flare up, I go off somewhere myself and continue to work, but just let the pain subside. Um, so yeah, it's definitely possible and people are very accommodating. Um, we actually just hired our first deaf production trainee. So that was amazing for him and for us because he said that he's never really been given that opportunity before. So it's great to have someone 
that has a disability like that in our office and being able to get those opportunities. I'd like to hear more about that because he can't use a walkie to communicate. So I'm wondering how that's all working. We don't use walkies in the production office. We have an interpreter, but we also use WhatsApp and he writes things down on notepads and we will slowly but surely learn BSL so we can communicate with him as well. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Now, the bad girl opportunity, was that a referral that happened from being on set? Can you t give us a chain of events for that? Because people are probably interested in that. Yeah. Um, so the bad girl was kind of interesting. Basically, the first time I was working on bad girl, um, I was a location marshal. And that's just because they put a call out in one of the runner groups that I'm a part of looking for location marshals. So that's how I got in the first time. But then... The second job I had on it was as a COVID marshal in their production office. And it was when I was in the production office that I was able, able to meet other people and network and get more jobs. So while I was working as a COVID marshal in the office, I spoke to the crowd second AD and got some crowd PA work for a week a little later down the line. And then... Funnily enough, um, I ended up working on the second unit for the full three weeks because back in December, the, the line producer posted in a group that she was looking for a production assistant, I think it was, and I'd emailed her back in December, only really had COP26 as my experience at this point, but saying like, hi, I'm Sarah, I'd be interested in um, any runner jobs you have. And then when I was in the production office, I managed to meet her and introduce myself to her. And then I managed to get the three weeks on second unit because of her, because the people working on second unit, the production coordinator went to her saying, hey, I need a runner for second unit. And she just went, call her. Yes. Like didn't, she didn't see my CV or anything. She just, yeah, recommendation, call Sarah. Because you guys yeah. work together. And she's like, I like the way she works. Most of the jobs are gotten by somebody working with you. And then if they do ask you to send in a CV, it's just to confirm. But you usually don't get straight in the door with the CV. You don't get in the door by applying for jobs or sending in your CV. We'll take those opportunities if, they, if they're there. We'll take them. We'll compete with them, of course. But the majority of the work, it's all like, hey, who's good? Who's good? Who's good? So what would you say about somebody that's looking at joining the A-list program? I would say to them that if you're someone like me who had no idea where to start and things like writing your CV and emailing people is something that you just have no idea how to do, it's a great program and it really helps build your confidence. Um, I would say before I started Friends in Film, I was already quite a confident person, but I didn't know anyone in the industry. So that's always going to be daunting having to speak to people. But the modules, I really like the way it worked, that the modules at the beginning are about building that confidence and building that get it factor because you need that when it comes to your emails. You, need, you can't just type an email, no idea what you're doing and hope for the best. Like I really think being able to build up that confidence and know what it is you're looking for and why you want to be in the industry is why I would recommend Friends in Film and why I'm really glad I took it. One of the most valuable things is understanding the business so that you can write emails and you can put stuff on your resume that you know is relevant. Yeah, like it was... For me, I used to be a competitive swimmer, so I included that in my CV because I know that even though I'm obviously not swimming here or doing any type of athleticism, I have qualities from doing that that transfer into the industry and would help with the job, essentially. Fantastic. You go to work, girl. It's been an incredible experience. And yeah, if you're not already on the course, I definitely recommend it. It will. I mean, I'm a year into this and I'm working as a secretary, so it works. So thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for listening today. And if you have a moment, could you please leave me a review? I would love that. 
And make sure you head over to friendsandfilm.com join and sign up for my free mini course on what you need to know to find opportunities and start making film and acting work come to you. I'll see you next week.